Hey everybody, this is Chuck Marone with Strong Towns. Uh, there's a new city that's gonna be appearing in uh, Louisiana called the City of St. George. It's being carved off of a little part of uh, 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 Baton Rouge Township, or Parish, I'm sorry. They use a different word down there than we do. Um, this has got a lot of people up in arms. It kind of brings back all the uh, conversations about um, race and uh, the, the kind of suburbs grafting on, uh, white flight, all this stuff that we see uh, when we talk about places like Flint, Michigan or Jackson, Mississippi. And once again, I think we've got the narrative a, a little bit wrong here. There's more nuance to it than that. And I'm going to try to do my best to provide you a little bit of that nuance. I don't know Baton Rouge as well as a city like Lafayette, Louisiana. Um, so I'm gonna talk about Lafayette, Louisiana, understanding that there's a lot of similarities in terms of their consolidated government and the way that things work. When we did a big study of Lafayette, and I, I went with Urban 3 uh, to Lafayette back in, I don't know, 2014, 2015, and we tried to answer the question, why is this city broke? I mean, why? A city that has invested a lot in growth, invested a lot in development, has no money. They can't maintain their roads. They can't maintain their basic systems. They have huge backlogs of, uh, of infrastructure maintenance, along with everything else being really tight financially. What, what, what's going on? And we found uh, two things. And these are not things, in a sense, we discovered. These are things that we... Uh, showed with the data were happening. They were things that we had seen in other places that when we ran the numbers in Lafayette looked very similar to what we see in other places. Number one, the poorer neighborhoods, the kind of OG neighborhoods of the city, the ones that were built on high ground, the ones that were built in the original uh, subdivisions, the stuff that's been there for 100 plus years, all that stuff is financially viable. It pays more taxes, contributes more in fees than it costs to provide service and maintenance. And that is very, I don't know, it's a, it's a sensical conclusion, right? It's a sensical observation. Uh, when we look at those neighborhoods, they existed back in the day when they were getting no outside subsidy, when we didn't have this top-down growth machine centered around the horizontal expansion of cities. And so these are places that are viable. Uh, they continue to be viable, even though they are run down, dilapidated, uh, occupied by some of the poorest people in the community. They are places that work. Um, all the stuff then out on the edge um, essentially costs more to provide ongoing service and maintenance to than they generate in tax revenue. Uh, they cost more to provide road maintenance, sewer water, uh, electric, police protection, fire protection, if you add up all those costs, it's way more out on the edge compared to the taxes and the fees that they're paying. They're losing money on that stuff out on the edge. That's the first thing that we showed. Long term, this is, this is how the city works. The second thing though, and I think this is the, the little nuance that is often overlooked um, or is maybe a little bit more difficult to talk about, is that the gap overall is just massive, it's, it's unfathomable. Um, you literally have to raise taxes something like 900% on people in order to make this work. It, it was, it's just unfathomable and there's really like no way anyone's gonna pay to maintain the stuff that they built. Uh, there's a long-term structural deficit and the more that they grow in this horizontal fashion, the more they grow in the way they're growing, the worse that that becomes. Here's the problem and here's where the nuance comes in. All that stuff out on the edge today is brand new. Um, and when it's brand new, the developer has largely paid for that infrastructure. It didn't cost the city. The city pays for arterials and the city's making bad investments when it does that. But a lot of times they can get outside money to swing that. Uh, they can finance those things. They can do other things to kind of make that cash flow and make that work. But the developer pays most of the infrastructure. When I say the developer, what I'm saying is that those costs are then rolled over into the sale of the homes and it's tied up in people's mortgages. People are paying that first generation of development costs in their mortgages, in their commercial real estate products. 
The problem comes in when you have to maintain it. That's when it hits the city's budget, that's when it hits the city's balance sheet, and that's when the city has a huge financial problem. The thing is, and that stuff out on the edge, the time has not come yet. So if you're looking at it from a cash standpoint, those places out on the edge are actually generating more cash into the city than they're costing them today. Okay, let's take Lafayette then and say, those neighborhoods on the outside edge, the ones that are looking around going, we're subsidizing everybody else, we're paying for everybody else. Why should we be subsidizing these poor neighborhoods? Why should we be having anything to do with this other place? Um, we're doing great for ourselves. We can have our own schools, our own fire department, our own stuff. Let's do that. Here's the thing, for a very short period of time, that makes an infinite amount of sense. If they're totally, you know, looking at it in their own selfish self-interest, that makes a perfect amount of sense. The thing is, very quickly, that stuff is gonna age out. And then they are going to be in a world of hurt. They're gonna have way more costs, way more expenses than they otherwise would. If we look at the city core, and we said, okay, well, that place has got all the poor people, all the people that are supposedly costing so much, those places are financially solvent. If they lose all that kind of dead weight on the edge, Yes, they lose the immediate cash flow of that, and that is going to financially hurt in the short term. But in the long term, these places are actually financially solvent. They actually would do better in the long term by dropping all that dead weight on, on the edge. I think the trick here is going to be not only the transition, but what happens when that day of reckoning comes. Because when the day of reckoning comes, what we see in other places, and I'll point to Memphis as being one, Memphis has provided utilities to all the places around them at a huge loss for a long, long time. They tax their own residents. They actually raise the fees and raise the taxes on their own residents who are much, much poorer than the people out on the far edge. And they do that to provide utilities for people out on the edge, provide them sewer, provide them water, provide them police and fire protection. These are really bad investments. They're really dumb investments. And once Memphis started to understand them, they started to uh, retract from those. They started to try to get themselves out of them. They started to say, hey, we're not gonna provide you that service. If we do, it's gonna be at much higher cost. And they've been embroiled in lawsuits with surrounding jurisdictions ever since. Those jurisdictions want something below cost. And there's where the rub is. There's where the problem is. And there's where I think, you know, this idea of a new city in outside of Baton Rouge is gonna have the biggest problems. When I saw this, I saw the analysis, and I thought, my gosh, they're gonna be way better off without this dead weight on the edge. Uh, that's true in the long run. I think if I'm the city of Baton Rouge, if I'm the parish, I'm trying to figure out what that transition looks like, and then how I decouple myself from that place that wants to be decoupled from me. Because if I can decouple myself from them, I'm gonna be better off and they can have everything that they want on their own at the cost it costs to provide it.